It's the job of a government to look forward and to make sure that we are ready for eventualities. And the news today that we need to build gas power stations to make sure that we don't suffer blackouts in the future is yet another indication that the government that's been in power for the last 14 years has not had its eye on the future. It's had its eye instead on some crazy ideology developed by Tufton Street and the ERG. And there's also a report today about the various border facilities. For example, the one in Harwich, the 22 billion border facility with the 13 spotless loading bays, um, which uh, from the end of the month is supposed to be receiving trucks delivering food and animal products from the EU to be inspected. And yet the EU and the industries in the UK are saying that we're not ready. We're not remotely ready for a new post-Brexit border inspection process. It's as if the people who are doing the bureaucracy, oh my goodness, the government, simply cannot think ahead, simply are incapable of organising the various civil servants to get the work done which is necessary to implement the ideological changes which have been imposed on us for everything from Brexit to HS2. HS2, even before Brexit was considered, HS2 was branded a white elephant, a vanity project. And yet, it's still chugging on, it's still eating up money, it's still eating up people's homes and farms and the agricultural land uh, around our country, it's eaten up estates, it's causing traffic problems, it's causing personal problems, and it's going nowhere. It's not even quite getting into London, which is what we all feared. It's not even quite getting into the station in Birmingham. You're going to have to do quite a long walk from the station that it finally arrives at to Birmingham New Street, and it's not getting up north. It is useless utterly and fundamentally useless. If it takes five or ten minutes off your journey, you're going to be spending five or ten minutes, fifteen, twenty, thirty minutes waiting for the connection to get from one place to the next. It is fundamentally and absolutely pointless. Similarly, the power station problem, similarly, the border check facilities, all utterly pointless because the bureaucracy hasn't been joined up because we seem to be living in an age where our parliament is more interested in its ideology than in ensuring that we have a reliable future. The only job that a parliament has is to make sure that the future is better than today. And this particular parliament, and I use the term very carefully, Parliament, not just government, Parliament, has not done its job. It's been too self-obsessed and self-concerned with Brexit, with scandal, with who has precedence over whom, with structure, internal structure, as if Parliament itself is important. Parliament is the servant of the people. Parliament is there to ensure that our future is better than our past. And that in the present, we are looking forward to the future and we are preparing for the future and we are making sure we have the bureaucracy and the bureaucratic systems in place and the machinery and the tools to make the future work. And we are limping forward with one eye looking backwards, regretfully, because they did things better in the past. In the 1970s, we had a problem because we had got into a position where we thought everything, the future, resembled the past. It didn't. Now we're in a position where we are blindly forging ahead into the future because we haven't prepared. This is what... Uh, happened in the 1980s, 1990s, and the early part of the 21st century. People were thinking ahead. Brexit seems to have crashed all that. 
and nobody's thinking forward at all. I didn't like Brexit, but it doesn't matter. We play the hand that we are dealt. And that is why Theresa May is the more um, a failing, is the more faulty than David Cameron. David Cameron, oh my goodness, David Cameron was a disaster. The smugness of the Scottish referendum followed by the Brexit referendum. He thought he was invincible. This is hubris on a big scale. I remember him walking down the street in Oxford. I remember when he was my own uh, MP. He was actually quite good as an, as an MP, but then he was also leader of the opposition, which meant he had a bit more authority. So when you asked him for something, it generally happened. But uh, it's Theresa May. The buck stops with her. The monumental dither, an inability to deal with the situation she had been handed, an inability to look forward because she relied on the bureaucratic fiddles that she'd relied on in the past. Windrush, for example. And she wasn't prepared to accept the blame for that. She passed the, she passed the buck on to Amber Rudd, who took the fall for her. Not only graceless, but dishonest because the paperwork was destroyed during her tenure in the Home Office. It's, it's outrageous that she should be leaving with her head even remotely held high. She is a disgrace. But she was followed by people who were even worse. A liar, a reckless buffoon, and now somebody who doesn't really know what he's doing because he feels that he's got to conform to an image that other people want. Rishi Sunak, as himself, I think was reliable. As this puppet of, I don't know, I, I don't know who's directing him, but whoever is writing his words is writing rubbish. And it doesn't come out as authentic, and it doesn't come out as comprehensive or comprehensible. It's nonsense. It's nonsense, woolly rhetoric. And we need to do better. I don't know whether a Labour Party is going to do any better than the present Conservative Party. The stuff it inherits is monumental. We have changed the way our country functions and we don't seem able to look forward.